Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I want to welcome you to our Care Connection, the free live webinar for family and professional caregivers of individuals living with Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. <clears throat> Uh, just a couple of things before we get started. Everybody is in listen-only mode for this session. If you have any questions, you can type them in on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, we're going to have time at the end of the presentation to go through questions. And we also have uh, this PowerPoint available in our handout section if you would like to download it and save it for your own use. Uh, today, we have a very special guest speaker with us, Michelle Olson, and she is going to be talking about gratitude through creativity. So we're really happy to have her as our guest. So, Michelle, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, Christy, and uh, thank you, AFA, for uh, having me as part of this uh, Care Connection webinar series, and thank you to all of you for being here. And um, so hopefully this webinar is um, something that uh, everyone who's here can uh, apply in their lives and in their works. I know we have care partners here and healthcare professionals. So um, hopefully this will be uh, informative and interesting. And just want to uh, just give you a little bit about me. Um, I am a gerontologist and a licensed board certified creative arts therapist and a certified activity consultant with a specialization in memory care and I work specifically with older adults for over 21 years. So what I do is I, I consult in various elder care settings um, and not-for-profit organizations and so I provide art therapy sessions, creative workshops, um, staff training and um, you know online and uh, over the phone consultations as well. So I am also a huge nature lover, right? You can tell by the, the image here and this, the topic today. Um, and so I very often find ways to incorporate nature um, and gratitude and, and contemplative practices in my work with older adults. I very often tie nature into my uh, creative uh, work with elders and also in my own life, in my own art making and um, mindful photography, which is something I like to do. Um, and I'm happy to do this now in November, which is actually National Gratitude Month, which really should be every day, every month and every day, right? Uh, and it's also National uh, Native American Heritage Month. So I'm very influenced by these spiritual practices as they relate to, uh, you know, nature and our planet and giving thanks. And I do bring this, uh, you know, as I said, into my work, um, into my creative art therapy work. Um, and at the end, uh, we'll have time for questions and comments. I don't want you all to worry about trying to write things down because I'm going to give so many ideas, creative art ideas. You can certainly get a copy of this PowerPoint. So, you know, either download it here or email me after. Um, so just enjoy this. Don't worry about writing anything down. And we'll get started. So what are we going to do this uh, next almost hour here? Um, we're going to... Um, be introduced to gratitude and really the benefits of being grateful. We know we have an idea what gratitude is, but we're going to delve a little deeper. Um, how nature is a key component to our well-being. How to silence that inner critic and really um, embrace the moment, spontaneity. Look closely at nature. Uh, how to do that? You know how to notice nature that is right outside your window right now, and uh, how to set up a space that encourages uh, creative exploration and connections with one another and with yourself, you know, yourself to nature. Um, and as I said, I'll, I'm definitely gonna give you all lots of uh, nature inspired ideas that you can use and apply in your, in your daily life and um, with those you love and care for. So what is, you know, this um, gratitude through creativity? <sighs> Take a deep breath. Uh, in our busy, technological, social media filled lives, I find that we, myself included, spend a lot of time and energy thinking about things we don't have, things we can't do. So gratitude, on the other hand, it really changes and shifts our priorities and it helps us pay closer attention to 
and recognize the things that we do have, the things that we can do. And so this is something we want to do, you know, for ourselves each day and for the elders we're working, working with, um, you know, to really focus on things that we do have. Um, and the other thing that I just want to quickly say is I do believe that we're missing vital opportunities in our lives, right? This technological um, time we're living in to really connect with nature. We have to really almost schedule this time um, because we're so busy each day. We're going to doctor's appointments and we have meetings to go to and we kind of put nature on the back burner and even our elder care settings. You know, I'll, I'll, I notice you know, some of them are in, in such amazing uh, beautiful locations, but how often are we given uh, giving elders the opportunity, the choice to be outdoors in nature, right? So th there should be, I believe, a little bit more, uh, you know, work done in that area, um, connecting us to nature. And gratitude, it's influenced by different social factors. Um, and some of them are religion, meditative practices, our family, uh, which includes parenting, uh, our relationships, the culture where we are living in, and also age. Um, age is, as we get older, we have the potential for greater emotional positivity. And uh, research also shows that as people become aware of their horizon growing shorter later in life, they have the ability to appreciate uh, you know, the goodness in close relationships and in these moments versus uh, someone younger who thinks that they have unlimited time left. And so this, this uh, compassion and gratitude, these are things that I've witnessed in my work and in my recent research as well. So that's all positive. Um, so gratitude, it is an amazing thing. Um, it, it has so many benefits. Um, you can see here on the screen it actually, when we're grateful, um, feeling grateful, it actually changes our brain. And there is a lot of research out there. You know, you can certainly just Google gratitude and um, brain health and you get all kinds of results. But it increases the hormone oxytocin. Um, it decreases cortisol, right? The stress um, that we're feeling. It boosts um, neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. So these are things that are responsible for happiness. And so this kind of causes a rippling effect. So when we feel good, we want to continue to feel good. And we also want to do uh, good for others. So really gratitude, as you can see, I mean, it, it has the power to help us physiologically, and biologically, socially, emotionally. So um, it's so interesting because practicing gratitude every day, right, like a habit, we're actually um, helping to build neural pathways. So it's really helping us to become, um, it's helping to become a permanent part of ourselves. So gratitude um, helps us become grateful. So I found this um, short little video on beaco.org. And what I'm going to ask y'all to do is just because we're not in a big hurry, right? Let's Take a deep breath. I want you to take in the, the imagery, the words, even the music, just for like two and a half minutes, just relax and uh, take this in. And I think this really sums up this webinar um, premise. Did that just cut off? I can't tell if that just cut off. Whoops. Huh. Sorry if that did.
Wasn't that beautiful? I think that video does a beautiful job of summing up um, that rippling effect of positive um, mindset um, and gratitude. So expressing gratitude through creativity. So this whole idea is really creating in a mindful way, um, focusing our intentions when we create not on being a perfect artist, get rid of that idea that there is such a thing, and really focusing on our, our own stories as individuals, um, memories we may have, the gifts that nature gives us, um, of course, being grateful for them. And it really, as I said, helps us to feel good, changes our mindset, and it has the power to change the world. So how to get started? How do we do this? Um, some of y'all are prob probably doing this already. Um, but the first thing that I would say, yes, we can appreciate nature and gratitude through glass. We absolutely can. I'm, I'm looking at some birds outside my window. Um, but I would, I would suggest getting outdoors. And getting outdoors in the spring and the summer is great because um, every season has something beautiful to offer, but in all seasons. So, um, I'll share something kind of fun with y'all that um, my partner and I do. For every season, um, we take our shoes off and late at night when the moon is out, we will go outside and we'll run around um, like crazy people. We will run outside, give thanks to the moon, you know, give thanks for the season. And so that's a way to really get in touch with nature and have some fun. Now, I realize not everyone's gonna do that, but you can get outside. Um, it, you know, hey, kick your shoes off and, um, and feel the earth, but at least be outdoors, even if it's a short while, to feel the air um, in your lungs, in your nose, the different scents, right? Autumn is very different from winter, very different from summer. Um, how things sound, how they smell, how they, how they um, feel on your skin. Something else I like to do, um, at, at, with the elders I work with and with my, you know, for myself and with my children um, is really take notice of um, when I'm sitting out in nature, look at the movement, the textures of nature, the way that the light and the shadows play on, on the shapes. And just look at things closely. Like it might be as big as that sunset, but it might be as small um, as a, you know, little sparrow pecking in a parking lot. It could be very small. Um, and lastly, say thank you. So kind of like that video showed, um, to really express gratitude for whatever it is that you're seeing or feeling. You could say it to yourself, you could write it down, you could say it aloud, but all of these things are helping to build those pathways that we talked about. I wanna uh, share this uh, picture with you, this uh, beautiful soul here. This is a friend of mine, uh, she's 101. She is a nun, and this is her daily mindful practice. She goes outdoors every day and all season, and she sits outside and she is in awe. That's her word. She's in wonder and awe, and she's taking in nature and God's gifts. 
this is what what she has shared with me and still at 101 um, to be this taken aback by um, her surroundings um, it really is um, inspirational to witness and it's honestly uh, research has showed too that that awe and wonder um, helps us to live longer so that kind of makes me reflect on uh, my friend here, sister who's 101. So if you're setting up a space to create in, um, whether that's in your home or, you know, if you're a professional and you're working, um, maybe you don't have more than just a, a corner of a dining room space, try to, to make sure that you, you have a special place to create in. Um, Some place that's warm. Hopefully it's well lit. I mean, windows would be ideal. Um, really uh, cut down on the distractions and the noise because this is important. This space is different from the space outside of it. Um, make sure that the tables are appropriate, that if people um, have walkers and wheelchairs, can they get in there comfortably and reach, you know, without stressing their back? Um, and also, this is something too I notice um, have a place, plenty of space uh, to display artwork. Um, of course, you want to ask people's permission. You never want to hang things up without asking. But um, it is disheartening to create and then, you know, see sometimes that, that artwork, these creative expressions are kind of shoved in a closet or shoved in a corner because there's no place to display them. And um, a lot of times, um, you know, this is really important for people that have done uh, creative expressions. They want to see it um, and feel good about their accomplishments. And we should honor that. And also sit together um, and encourage these connections and conversations. So the first thing that I do for every group that I run is I'm sitting with them and I start a handshake. So I will reach out to the person next to me to my right and I'll introduce myself, we'll shake hands and I will encourage around the circle to you know everybody to just kind of welcome everybody until the circle closes back to me because that's really what we are. We are all together in this. So um, some suggestions there. And then as far as um, creating uh, with people um, with forms of dementia, and, and really for everybody, there is no right or wrong way. And that is a hard concept for some people to, to understand, um, especially people who have a, a strong background in art. Um, sometimes uh, well-meaning staff will come up and start you know, painting for somebody, thinking that it's supposed to look a certain way, but it's not. Um, we kind of have to release that judgment, let art be spontaneous and happen as it's going to happen. Uh, and another thing I would, I would suggest is when you're creating with someone, you know, you can ask about things you observe versus assuming things you think you see. So in this drawing, you might say, oh, what a beautiful tree. Well, we don't know that's a tree. It might be a map. It might be a hand with fingernails. We don't know. So it's best to just kind of leave your judgment out and just uh, talk to the person um, and ask them to tell you about it, tell you about their art. And sometimes, by the way, um, their, their descriptions will kind of shift. Like it might start one way and then um, kind of morph into another story or memory that they have. And um, so that's, it's always interesting to talk to people about their art. So um, I'm going to give some uh, simple ideas to get y'all started. I, I get this question all the time is, can you please share with us what we can do? Um, and there's a lot of things you can do, especially for activity professionals, you know, in long term care homes that don't have a lot of money in the budget. These are things y'all can do like with little to no money. And um, certainly if you're a care partner in home, you know, you can, you can work together and gather items. Um, I'm a big fan, as I said, of gathering nature items. So for instance, this time of year, I'll take leaves, press them. If it's in the summer, it might be flowers. You might want to press them. But with leaves, you can press them and then cover them with gesso, uh, which is kind of like a primer or white paint, and then paint over them. You could 
simply just paint them. Um, this, these two say, thank you, Great Spirit, and thank you, Grandmother Moon. But it might just be colors, you know, and obviously there's a million things you can do with leaves. Um, but that's just one idea. I have lots of uh, boxes, like shoe boxes, filled with different items. So I have um, all kinds of shells, stones, um, lichen, moss, different pine cones, different sensory things that that um, people can explore together, uh, grasses, um, and also sticks, because I live right by the Hudson River. So I have, I don't even know how many sticks I have, but I've got a lot of sticks, driftwood that have washed up, and sticks from the forest. So these are all things that you'll see that you can, you can use um, creatively and inspire that connection to nature. And then of course on the right, you can see um, you know, items with more sensory um, components. So they, they smell and when you rub them or smash them or paint with them, you know, these, are, these are things that um, you can incorporate within the art as well. Or just appreciate them on their own, you know, the different uh, textures and so forth. So um, this is actually just a recycled uh, burlap sack um, and um, someone has done like leaf rubbings and found acorns and different objects that uh, she was drawn to and uh, she kind of created this uh, assemblage, a collage of sorts, all natural you know, materials there. And so something that I'm sure that y'all have heard a lot um, and I hear it all the time is, is that critical voice, you know, um, whether it's ourselves, like we say, oh, I can't do this, I'm not an artist, you know, I'll hear um, horror stories from um, people, you know, in their 90s who were criticized, their art was criticized when they were children, so that squelched their desire to create um, for fear of failure, um, or, you know, they just think they're not going to do it right. So we really have to stress that um, when you create, it is yours. It is your process, it is your path, and there's no right or wrong. And be compassionate, and be compassionate to yourself as well. So this is um, a very simple project um, I've done a lot lately. It's actually a loom. You just find you know, sticks that are in a shape. They might be a, a Y or it might be two you know, two Ys together, like a, um, a branched out, and you just kind of weave some some string through there. Now, people who are um, uh, more able might be able to weave, like they do make thick needles specifically for yarn, and you can weave in and out um, with wool, and you can incorporate, you know, these natural items. But for somebody that's maybe further along, in the uh, disease process, they might not be able to, to weave anymore, but certainly they can appreciate the textures and the different um, natural objects. As you can see here, I think this is so beautiful. Um, it smells good. You can see there's some chive in there. Um, but the other thing I want to point out about this picture is, remember earlier I was talking about appreciating each season, and, you know, not just the warm months, but all the seasons. In that upper left corner, you can see those seed pods. Those are columbine seeds. So in the spring and the summer, there are these beautiful, um, almost like honeycomb type flowers, and they spread themselves like, like wildfire. So inside those little seed pods, dried up seed pods, there's little black seeds. Um, and so I like to spend time talking with people about how things are beautiful throughout their life, right? So they're beautiful when they're these vibrant purple flowers but they're also very beautiful when they're dry and older and they have gifts to give, right? There's seeds inside. So that just continues that gratitude for nature. And same with grass, you know, the dried grass um, this time of year is absolutely beautiful. So um, this is uh, an idea, you know, certainly um, you can do, um, using calendars, right? What do we do with all those old calendars or maybe magazines? 
Um, and so this artist, um, she, I, I put items out on a table and she kind of chose things that um, struck her in some way. So, you know, it's some, so a leaf and maybe some moss or sticks, pine, pine needles, whatever it is, you let them choose. So um, she created this frame and she called this image Moonstruck. And I think this is a, um, a beautiful project to do. Um, I would recommend cutting images out first, right? And you've probably noticed if you've done collage work, you put magazines out and it turns into like a, a reading session <laughs> versus a creative art session. So try to cut out some images first to give choice. And sometimes um, the colors are in our mind. So um, when somebody is maybe, again, they might be further along um, in, the, in the disease process, they don't uh, have the words any longer, um, or they're not able to, to say what it is that they're, that they're thinking of, but that creativity is still there. So um, that creating art really um, engages different regions of our brain than the part we use for language. And that's why you, you see people you know, able to um, pick up uh, the brush and create or sing a song, um, do things, even though they may not be able to have a conversation. So this woman who created this, um, I think this is stunning. Um, I worked with the woman who, she was actually legally blind and she was having a hard time now um, expressing herself verbally. So we were talking about um, the sunset on the Hudson River and what, what colors, you know, do we see when we look at a sunset? So now she can't see any longer, but certainly she has that picture in her mind. And so she would tell me the colors and we would work together. So, you know, it might be hand, in this case, it was hand over hand. So she was painting and I was helping her to, to find the color that she mentioned. And then she would move her hand left to right. And she would tell me another color and we, you know, it would go that way back and forth, left to right or right to left. And the results, um, I think are beautiful. And that absolutely feels like a warm sunset. So I think everybody's heard of um, gratitude journaling, right? So that is one way um, researchers have found to, to practice gratitude every day. Um, you can do this, you know, in a very simple way. You get yourself a notebook, a journal, and you can just either write down thoughts that you're grateful for or words, but um, you might just sit outside or look out your window and find something that catches your eye. So in this case, this is actually my drawing. Um, I was camping and I happened to see this um, kind of a seed pod on the, you know, against that blue sky and it really caught my attention. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, realistic at all. It could just be the colors that you feel when you're inspired by something, it might be, um, you know, just the clouds. It, it really, again, there's no right or wrong, but just observing, paying attention, um, being grateful, and that um, keeping a journal helps to do that. And then it's also fun to to flip through it and, um, you know, look through your gratitude journal, and it just begets more more and more gratefulness. So <clears throat> combining nature and art materials. So I might come in to a session with an idea, right? Like I'll come in thinking we're going to, to do a project a certain way, but I'm always, always open to letting it go in the process that, that the person I'm with, how they, how they want it to go. So in this case, I had pressed leaves thinking we were gonna do, um, you know, pa painting leaves, tracing leaves. Well. Uh, this woman, she actually traced the leaf um, as part of her whole image here. And then she was very insistent that it be glued to the to the board. And I, I love that. Of course, I come prepared. So um, that that leaf is now Mod Podged as part of a whole image. So it's combining different art materials. And again, giving up that control that, you know, this is our project today and this is what we're doing let it go where they want it to go and embrace it and praise it. So 
So I always um, provide opportunities for decisions. Sometimes I don't think we give people enough credit. I'll be honest. We might um, sometimes, you know, put out things that might be, you know, um, a little, a little um, young, maybe, um, you know, for younger people, because we think maybe uh, people won't be able to to use these materials. But at least let's give them the the opportunity for choice and for making decisions, um, even if it's just between a couple colors or which way they would like to create, you know, if it's a portrait, you know, vertical or horizontal. Um, and again, really, um, I encourage that autonomy for people to be, uh, to work independently. Um, although I am a hand there if they need it, so they can direct me. A lot of times people will say, I can't write this word. Can you write this for me? And absolutely, I will then be your hand. You direct me. And so we are encouraging the spontaneity. We're encouraging people to make um, those bold choices and, um, and praising them. And so this watercolor was inspired by sunflowers. So this day, I came in with a bunch of sunflowers. And this is what um, emerged from that. Um, and it's called Explosion. This gentleman um, created a, a painting called Explosion. And I think this is, is really beautiful as well. So um, again, we want to know each person as a person, right? Their individual interests and histories really helps us um, to create with them. So uh, this image, you know, it's not completely nature inspired, but I think it relates because I was working with this gentleman uh, and he had early onset uh, Alzheimer's and it was getting very difficult for him to uh, recognize art materials and he didn't uh, any longer know what to do with them and even had a conversation was getting challenging. But I happened to know that he liked to work with his hands, that he liked to build things um, in his life. So the next time I came, I brought little doodads, right? Screws and bolts and nuts. And um, I, I'm not sure why we had um, some pictures on the table. We had some uh, magazine pictures on the table, but he wanted that cat there and he kind of framed it and did like a sculptural wire wrap. Uh, he called this piece Here Kitty Kitty. And I think it's uh, fantastic. And again, we want to um, remember that it's about their process. I had someone contact me last week about, you know, I have a staff person that that always wants to do the art for the person. And um, we don't we we want to take a step back. Right. So just let them go create as they want. And we're just there to encourage it. So uh, as I said, I'm a big fan of sticks, sticks of all kinds. And I'm always coming up and finding creative ways to use sticks because in and of themselves, they're little works of art. Um, whether it's that smooth um, uh, driftwood, we talk about, we touch the wood and we talk about the life that that wood has had, you know, how it was once a tree and now it got tumbled around into the, in the river or the ocean. Um, or maybe it's a, a tree that has uh, fallen and it was in the forest and now it's got moss and lichen on it. But you can really see these are all created by people I've, I've worked with and whether it's wrapping with fabric or with wool um, and incorporating natural materials, um, putting a mantra on there, something um, that they want to express as a reminder to themselves. You know, it may be about um, gratitude or something that they're grateful for. Um, I, uh, the one on the bottom right, I had a woman who could no longer speak after um, having a stroke, but she loved art. And so her mantra that she chose was, um, I will talk. So she really made it her mission. She wanted that hung up where she could see it and to really make that her, her, her daily practices. I'm going to talk. So that was really powerful. This is um, a mandala, right? Everybody has seen different ways to create and paint mandalas. This you can clearly see, this is uh, giving thanks for glorious colors. This is an autumn 
um, inspired painting, right? There's no recognizable leaves, but you, you can clearly see that autumn is the inspiration um, for this piece. And so what I did was I, everybody who was a part of the group, I put them all together. And so again, keeping with that circle um, theme of, you know, our, our um, connectedness with one another, connectedness with the art, connectedness with nature. Um, this is a, an option um, you can do with your, with your loved one or your um, uh, friends that you're working with. Now, a lot of times I come in with ideas and I'm not gonna lie, people think I'm crazy. They do, and they roll their eyes and um, you know, they, they are like, really, you want us to do what? I go with it. I'm like, just humor me. Just, you know, we don't have to do it again, but let's just give it a whirl, right? So um, this was kind of a fun project that I've done a couple different ways uh, where we did a cleanup, um, picked up objects along the shore that, you know, debris that littered, littered the shore, and we created a junk sculpture out of it. So it's kind of, um, it's good brain work too, right? To try to figure out how we can get pieces to go together. Um, it could be painted all one color, or it could be left alone. But you could also do this with, you know, besides junk, you could do it with natural objects. You could just create little small sculptures, you know, just giving uh, people wire. They can try and wrap uh, pieces together to create their own unique sculptures and um, in tribute and gratitude to nature. And um, I know there are a lot of places have gardens inside now, which is amazing. That is so important, right? That gets, gets us in touch with nature. So I'm suggesting um, an idea of planting a gratitude garden specifically for gratitude. You could have a bench out there um, or you know, place it somewhere where people could see it from the window. But um, so you would wanna fill it with things um, that attract pollinators, that plants and flowers, milkweed, plant some herbs that, that flower and that you could then use you know, maybe in your um, cooking, right? If you're at home or if you're in a, in a care home, maybe you can use those um, in your cooking groups. Um, and painting stones. I don't know why I don't have a picture of that, but I, I've done a lot of um, painting of stones where we put words and images and sometimes just color, right? It might just be color painted on um, a stone. And then you can line your gratitude garden with those stones to really make it um, a pronounced place, um, a special place. And um, I happen to raise monarchs. So these are three of my, um, my last babies that left uh, this fall, the last generation that took off from Mexico. So that is in itself is something that you can do with those that you're, that you're caring for and um, really engaging them with nature and those amazing different life phases of the caterpillar to chrysalis to butterfly. Uh, something that, um, you know, creative writing, there's a lot of research out there on, you know, poetry and creative writing um, in forms of dementia. And this is something I have done for, for many years is um, really talking with people, using nature as an inspiration. So it doesn't have to be anything complicated. It could be as simple as a feather or a time of year. Um, and just, it could be a haiku, right? Like that on the right there, much like a window, we can look inside or out, depends on our view. That's a haiku, that 575. But if that's too complicated, just take their words, just take their exact words, write them down, read them back. And it's, it's pretty amazing what happens. Um, and when you combine nature art and their words in poetry form, um, it's something really that um, everybody can appreciate, um, you know, and it really is, ins is, is inspiring. Something um, you may or may not know about, there's a light sensitive paper called Nature Prints. Y'all can find that, um, you can just Google Nature Print and it'll pop up. You can, 
I think you can even get it on Amazon or um, Dick Blick. But it's a light sensitive paper. And again, it, we need to get outside for this. So you, you take objects, it might be jewelry or something they're wearing, but it might be, um, you know, when you're outside, you, you take people on a little walk, right? A short little walk and you collect objects together. What catches your eye? What do you see that we could, that we could collect here? And then you place these objects on this light sensitive paper, expose it to sunlight, put it in water, and now you've got these beautiful, um, you know, pieces of art and these kind of cobalt blue pieces of art. I happen to um, embellish them with a blue pen, which by the way, let me just look and see. My favorite kind of pen um, is a, a Uniball Signo pen, which you can email me after, but there's a lot of white pens, but I do have a favorite, um, but that is kind of a fun way. You can write words of gratitude in there um, as well. Um, as simple as getting some pastels or pencils um, and just draw a, a place, you could paint it, draw it, a place in nature that makes you feel peaceful. So every one of you listening right now, I know that you have a place that you feel, that makes you feel peaceful. So um, you'll pick, you can picture it in your mind. And, and so what does it feel like? What does it look like? What does it smell like? All of that can can kind of be pulled to you just by, by thinking of it. For me, it happens to be um, in the sun, on the ocean. Um, and it doesn't have to be realistic. Again, it might be abstract. It might just be kind of the colors of that place that you love, that you feel grateful for. Um, this is actually um, drawn by a woman who used to take, who used to love to take daily walks in the woods. That was her sacred place. That was what she was grateful for. She's a huge nature lover. And here you can see that red figure. That's her sitting underneath the, the big pines. And um, again, so just embrace wherever that idea takes you. Uh, another very simple idea you can do indoors or out, but I love to do this outside, um, which is just finding natural objects and creating a peace mandala. And so you can kind of put your intentions out there, say what you're grateful for, um, and just let the wind carry those intentions out. Just, you know, it'll just naturally disperse. Um, and so that's another creative and uh, meaningful way to, to use nature um, in, your, in your daily life. So speaking of uh, resilience and gratitude, if anyone knows the, the uh, work and life of Viktor Frankl, I love this quote. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. And so that's really what this webinar speaks to is um, feeling grateful, even being grateful, even if we're not actually believing it, right? If we're at the moment, we're still kind of thinking of those negative things. But if we just keep repeating what we're grateful for, we will start to shift our mindset and change ourselves. And we've got, um, that's, that's it. Um, we have some time for, for questions, if anyone has any. And yeah, certainly, great, thank you. Yeah, sorry, sorry go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, people can certainly email me after as well. Great. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, as she mentioned, now we have some time for questions. So if anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and type them in on the control panel on your screen, and I'll read them off to Michelle uh, for answers. We have some folks who have said that they really enjoyed your presentation, so I just wanted to share that with you. Oh, great, great. Uh, so someone asked how you can get the PowerPoint slides. So they are in the handout section on the control panel on your screen, and so you should just be able to download it there. 
Uh, if there's any problems with that, you can just go ahead and email Michelle and she can send them to you as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A couple of folks who said this was wonderful. Thank you. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I really liked a lot of the, lots of great ideas here. Right. And something, um, you know, because this was more about um, creating with gratitude. We didn't talk a lot about resistance, um, which could be a whole <laughs> webinar in itself. Mm -hmm. But um, I should probably touch on that. You know, if, if you're finding okay. people are resistant to creating, um, we don't want to push it. You know, I, I do notice sometimes people will um, be brought to like an art group that I'm running and they'll say, oh, you know, Mrs. Jones is an artist. She loves art. You know, uh, Mrs. Jones, can, come on, paint me something. But I, I think we should just kind of back off a little and just allow people if they want to just watch or, you know, look at the materials they don't even have to participate um, but that's something too that that we see a lot is, is um, sometimes resistance because they're not exactly certain that they can do it and they just they want to feel comfortable first just like all of us right yeah absolutely uh, so someone said that they missed the first part of this of the session and asking if they can get a copy of the recording so i will say that this webinar along with all of the other ones that we have done are recorded uh, on our website, and so they are archived on our website. Uh, Michelle, someone is asking what your email is. Sure, um, it's Michelle with two L's. It's M I C H E L L E at Creative Path Consulting. So it's Creative, and then Path P A T H Consulting dot com. We have another question here from Courtney. She said, I like how you suggested that sacred spaces are the same as secular spaces, like being thankful for a bird in a parking lot. How can we create more of a creative environment with music or even reading poetry that can help open people up? Hmm. Well, I think just talking about it. So, you know, I think people don't even know what they don't know. So the fact like you're even having that um, that thought to introduce poetry and music, like what, you can use that as inspiration. So maybe, um, you know, kind of introduce it into a group that you're already doing. Um, a lot of times um, I, I might have soft music in the background. Um, so it really depends what we're doing. Sometimes it's a little distracting, right? When, when I'm trying to introduce um, different ideas and it might seem abstract to have all these natural objects and music going at the same time. So um, to kind of simplify it, but um, I'm not sure I'm, I'm actually answering the question exactly, Courtney, um, but um, I would say just start by introducing that idea, you know, bringing up that um, notion of, of noticing, paying attention to little things it might just be a leaf, just bring in, bring in an object and really have people explore it, look at it, um, that type of thing. Great, thanks. Uh, someone said these th these specific suggestions are more helpful than just telling caregivers to encourage creativity. The material suggested and examples of the works are very helpful. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. And um, and I did that intentionally because I didn't want to just you know overwhelm you with with lots of um, jargon. I wanted to give you things that you can do today um, all year long. So um, I appreciate that. I'm glad. Thank you. Great. Uh, someone asked, uh, they said that you mentioned you're a gerontologist and if you can just expand on that a little bit. Sure. Yeah. So um, I just actually uh, finished my um, doctorate in, in uh, social gerontology. My technical degree is leadership in gerontology. So I focus on um, the social and the psychological aspects of aging. I'm an advocate um, for older adults, particularly in long-term healthcare, um, but also in the socio-cultural context, right? So um, speaking out against ageism and all of the things that we encounter as we get older. So, um, you know, aging, it's a lifelong process, right? I'm, we're all aging. Well, you know, so that's really what a gerontologist does is it's kind of a, many different areas um, kind of pulled together 
on the you know the as various aspects of aging. Great. Uh, so let's see. Someone said, I appreciate your comment on asking the person what their art project is about so that we don't assume. Cool idea offering the nuts and bolts to mix within a project for that gentleman. It's a good reminder. Thank you. Thanks so much. And let's see. Cheryl said, happy early Thanksgiving and greetings to everyone. A huge thanks to AFA and Michelle for this fabulous creative webinar. Uh, excellent illustrations along with your genuine heartfelt touches. Thanks with love and friendship. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Let's see. And Teresa said, my dad loves to draw in color. Thanks for sharing about painting rocks. I have rocks around the tree and mailbox. He and I will paint them. Thanks again. Oh, great idea. That's yeah, a great idea. Sounds like a great project. Right. Oh, I love that around the mailbox too. Because anything you can do to to bring those touches to your space, you know, inside and outside, I think is is wonderful. It's great, Teresa. Thank you. All right. So it looks like that's it for the questions. And so I just want to thank you, Michelle, for this really great presentation today. And I also just want to thank all of you for participating on this call. Uh, we'd like to welcome you back next month on December 12th. We're going to be talking about frontotemporal dementia with Sharon. And thank you again for joining us, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Christy. Thanks, everybody.